Welcome to Daily Mods. The goal of the series is to install a mod every day. One thing that I would like to note though is this video is not installing a mod, instead it is installing a game. So first things first about this, you don't want to install the game just normal, like go here, C, C drive. Instead, you're going to install it on a separate drive. Go to settings, go to downloads, steam library folders. You can add a steam library folder here. Something you need to do when installing Skyrim or any other game you wish to mod in which the mods are deployed to the game folder instead of a dedicated external folder is you need to move the game folder. So a few things to note, you can in steam itself, Go to settings, go to downloads, steam library folders. You can then add steam library folders on a separate drive if you have a separate drive, such as I have here, a one on A, which is my default install folder and where most of my games are. Another option, if you do not have a separate drive, steam will default to program files x86 because it is a 32-bit application. You can go to Steam, make sure you right-click on the Steam application, click Exit, take this folder, Control-X, go to here, the top level, or C colon slash, of your drive, create a new folder, Games, and Paste. Do not do this while Steam is running. If you do that, it will not function properly. It will probably not copy all the files. Once you have done this, or when you go to settings, then downloads, Steam library folders, you will notice that the C drive is no longer program files. The reason you do this is because if you do not do this, you will be forced to run certain tools as administrator. This is very dangerous, and now we're going to install the game. I'm installing it on D drive because it is my biggest drive and has the most disk space available to allow me to install more mods. I'm going to go ahead and let it install, and I should see you shortly. All right, so now we have gotten to the game is installed. There's one more thing that you have to do, otherwise the modding tools you use will not be able to detect the game. And that is click play, wait for it to launch, set up your INI, &I, and exit. So the first one that I'm going to show you to install can be found at nextmods slash site. Go to the mods, browse all, and there is Vortex. Go ahead and go to files. I recommend using the one-click installer. So go ahead and manually download that. Save it to wherever you want to save it. Let's say downloads folder. Run it. It'll ask you a few questions. All right, so now Vortex is open. First thing you need to do, click login or register. This should open in your default browser, and if you are logged in in your default browser, you can click Authorize. It will then show you are now logged in. It does not currently have any games managed, so a few things you need to do is set up the games. You can go to Games, and here's a list of unmanaged. 92 games are currently supported. And I have Skyrim Special Edition. You might notice these two messages on the right. Mods can't be deployed. This is a simple fix. The reason why is going to be because your game is on a different drive than the mod manager mod files are. So go ahead and click apply fix. 
you can click suggest then click apply now you have hard link I only recommend using hard link move link is not supported there is an alternative of USVFS deployment and that is not supported at all you may also notice loose files may not get loaded just click fix no need to worry about that I will do that click that click downloads change this the D drive I'm going to just set up a new folder vortex downloads select that folder and hit apply the next thing I recommend doing do this wall vortex is closed go into where you have the game stored select the DLL files and the exe files type control C open a new window navigate to where you set your mods path once you have found the folder go ahead and create a new folder I recommend naming it based off of the, the version number of the current game so let's say vanilla 1.5.97 go in there Control V. You can now create a new folder, name it data, go into that folder, copy the ESM files. Once that is done, close both, open Vortex again. If you want, you can pin it to the taskbar, that's up to you. And here it is. Double click the newly added mod, change the name, and change the version number. Select the mod type of D input, hide that. The second mod manager I'm going to show you is Cortex Mod Manager. It can be found on Skyrim LE website. However, it can be used for more than just Skyrim LE. First thing you need to do to install this mod manager is scroll down towards the bottom, find the install docking drivers, right click, go open a new tab, find here docking setup. Download this to wherever, just going to download to the games folder I have set up on the D drive, run it, agree, and install. This will require you to restart your computer. If you, once you have completed install. Next thing you need to do is go to the Cortex Mod Manager page again, find Discord Server. The mod page is not fully up to date, however the Discord is. Go to the Discord Server, it will probably open it in your Discord app if you have it. Go to Dev Builds tab and find the latest mega.nz file. Once that has appeared, click download. Going to go ahead and save it to the same folder. Show in folder, right click, extract to Cortex. Go into Cortex. First time you run it, it will tell you that the profile folder doesn't exist. I recommend not using the default value, but rather clicking browse folder and browsing to the drive the game is on, preferably inside of Cortex folder. Do not put it inside the game folder. Click the drop down and select the game, which for us is Skyrim SE. Create an instance. Mod a day. Click OK. Click OK again. It will load up. You can switch to Mod Manager page, and here, click the Add button, New Mod from Folder. If you watch the Vortex portion of this video, you will have seen copying the game exe and DLLs as well as the ESMs to a new folder. 
for me, that is this folder here. Select the folder, click the check mark to create as link mod, or just create as link mod. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to the proper name, click OK, click the checkbox. Next mod manager I'm going to show you, you can get from several different sites on Nexus. The instance I'm going to get is from the Nexus Mod Special Edition site, and it is Mod Organizer 2. Go ahead and go to the site, it's 6194. Go to Files, and select the Archive version. So manually download this. I'm going to put it in the Games folder. Save it there. Right click. It is a 7-zip archive. For this, you will need 7-zip once you have extracted Mod Organizer 2. Double click Mod Organizer 2, click Create New Instance, select Skyrim SE, click OK. It will attempt to create the data direct or the information needed to the, Sky, the app data local section of your computer. This is not recommended. If you are new, I recommend go to paths. The base directory is created to app data local. This is not advisable because the downloads for your mods will be there. The mods extracted will be there, as well as a few other folders and files. And this can create some issues, especially if you are low on space on the C drive. For this reason, change base directory to to in the games folder on the same drive as your game. New folder called Nemo 2 SSE or something along those lines. Select that. Downloads, I recommend putting onto your biggest drive. Same as with Vortex and Cortex. And click OK. It will ask you a question. Go ahead and proceed.